So we might buy a website in a particular niche that's that's like a passion site. There's amazing you know niches online, like things like photography and things where people have created these incredible websites with amazing content and have big followings, but they get a bit downhearted because they don't know how to monetize it and they don't know how to take it to the next level. So that's a really good acquisition. So think about it from that perspective as well. You may not just be buying a, a business model in itself, you may actually be buying it to own your marketplace. Welcome back to the Talking Web Marketing Podcast with myself, Ilana Wexler. This is a show where we reveal the best tips, tricks, and tactics to increasing your website traffic and then converting that traffic into leads and sales. We also discuss what's working right now in the ever-changing world of web marketing so you can apply it to your business. Alana Wexler here with another episode of Talking Web Marketing. So welcome back to today's episode. I'm talking about something that we've never spoken about before and that is I guess it's a traffic generating strategy uh, by buying an existing website. So rather than you buying a new domain name and building up a website from scratch, there are people out there and lots of people who go about buying an existing website which has already got traffic, it's already making money and they buy it off someone who for lots of reasons doesn't want to continue with that website anymore and uh, you and that's that's a form of I guess buying traffic really so I'm not an expert in this so I brought along a husband and wife team uh, under the name of Liz and Matt Rad from eBusiness Institute to talk about the process by which they go about before they buy a website as you can imagine it's it's kind of like buying a property right where you've got to do your due diligence you've got to get a property inspection you've got to have a look at the property etc so buying a website is kind of like buying a business or buying a property where you need to do your due diligence so um, I really press Liz and Matt hard on the things that they look for before they buy a website what are the common pitfalls that people fall into? We actually cover a lot of material. So if you are considering buying an existing website as a form of, I guess, asset building, or if you've never even considered it you, after today's episode, you might certainly consider this as an option because it's a growing market and uh, there's lots of reasons people are looking to sell their websites and if you can find a way to improve it then uh, that's a good way of doing business obviously so yeah we'd cover lots of the due diligence process and um, the different I guess ways that you can renovate a website so Liz and Matt sort of buy sites that are already making money already generating traffic but then they look for sites that they can improve upon so obviously they improve that profit and traffic and then maybe flip it or being that they sell it or they just keep it in their portfolio and they just keep accumulating these assets. So we cover a lot of material in this episode so we have made a summary of all the information that we talk about in our show notes and so you can go to talkingwebmarketing.com dot com and download that resource so don't worry you don't if you're listening to it in your car or on a walk I know I listen to podcasts that way don't worry about furiously writing down notes we will do all that heavy lifting for you and create a nice PDF summary for you that you can download and yeah let's get stuck into today's episode Hi, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's awesome to have you here and I'm actually really interested in this topic. So, <laughs> so I'm going to ask lots of questions that I really want to know the answer of and hopefully our listeners will as well. Um, so before we kind of get into the nuts and bolts of how to go about buying a website, how to research which ones to buy, pitfalls to avoid and all that kind of interesting information. Can you kind of um, give me a bit of a backstory on who you guys are and, and generally what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so we actually uh, started out as zoologists, funnily oh, enough. Yes. 
So that that's, wasn't that's the even, answer I was expecting. <laughs> no, but that was never going to make us for money. And, and <laughs> it I was always, awesome. It was yeah, fun. It was awesome. And that's where we met. But I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. And we got into, when we finished uni, we actually got into buying and selling bricks and mortar businesses. And uh, was manufacturing businesses was our specialty. We, right. we got really good at Wholesale, it. Wholesale distribution as well. Yeah. And, and so we were... Basically, where we really started this whole journey was buying and selling bricks and mortar businesses. And we also did it professionally for high net worths and private equity firms and venture capital firms and stuff. So we've done stuff up to $20 million um, working with high net worths in those. But we realized, well, what we found was when you're doing bricks and mortar businesses, all your net worths tied up in stock in the sorts of businesses we were dealing in. And we wanted to do it well, once we had the kids and everything, we, you know, we wanted to get online because we saw the online model, just the leverage was amazing, absolutely amazing. It was the best business model we'd ever seen. So that's we, we decided to basically take our bricks and mortar buying strategies, just do it online with online businesses. And Liz being the legend that she is and the impatient one, she I remember the day she turned to me and go, because we learned, first of all, yes, we learned so how to, mention, we learned the basics of building a website and and doing this ourselves. And we launched a couple. And yeah, I turned to Matt and said, "Can we just can we just buy this? Do like I have to do this?" Yeah, totally. <laughs> so well, I've been there too. You know, installing plugins and all that, all that yeah. fun stuff. Not yeah. So we thought, okay, where's the leverage point here? Let let's see if we can get one that's already up and running. Because I think that's probably the biggest hurdle I think to a lot of people in gaining wealth is that there's a lot going on when you start a business mm. there's a lot going on and there's a lot of variables that are going on as well because you're actually testing something that you don't know if it's going to work or not mm. and especially online especially online and so that's what our goal is to take out a lot of that variable in that we pick a pick a website that's already up and running it's already got traffic it's already got profit and, and income coming in. So it's already proven itself in the marketplace. We've done, it's done that big rocket launch phase with all the energy and time that's involved in that. And so what we can do is just do the little tweaks to get it yep, quite quickly doubling or tripling that income. And that's our, that's our goal. That's our plan. Okay. So that kind of leads me into my question of why would somebody do this as opposed to building their own one? I guess it's for leverage and sp speed of implementation. Would you say? Yeah, Absolutely. totally. And by, as Liz said too, really important is you're buying an existing business model that's proven to work online. Mm. So you're not out there trying to test theories and things. You, you know, you go in and buy. So we can talk about the sorts of sites we buy in a minute, but you buy an information or content type site and you already know it's traffic, it's working, it's got a following. It, it's perfect. You just step straight into it. Okay. So that kind of leads me to my next question of what, I mean, you know, I've worked in this space for a long time now and I know that there's many different types of websites out there. You can have a straight kind of like a content site where they make money via advertising. You can um, sell obviously e-commerce products and you're buying that kind of website, um, SaaS models and, and Amazon businesses and all that kind of stuff. So what kind of website do you guys buy? So we were, because our background was manufacturing and wholesale and having huge amounts of stock and all that sort of stuff, we just said at that point, no, we're not doing that ever again. Um, okay, so, so we no focus e on sites. no e-commerce. Although we do do we we do own affiliate websites, so Amazon affiliate websites where we're sending traffic to places like Amazon, but we get paid a commission when someone buys. We don't do any of the stock handling or the refunds or the, so we never have to talk to a customer or supplier. That That's our dream business. <laughs> We've had lots of experience with that. So. I was going to say, as only someone who's done it for long enough goes, I don't yep. want to do this anymore. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing too, actually, which we should mention, for those of you listeners who already own a business and maybe aren't, aren't interested in buying a website in its entirety as another business, um, you can also buy, we also buy websites just for the traffic. Mm. So we might buy a website in a particular niche that's, that's like a passion site. There's amazing, you know, niches online, like things like photography and things where people have created these incredible websites with amazing content and have big followings, 
but they get a bit downhearted because they don't know how to monetize it and they don't know how to take it to the next level. So that's a really good acquisition. So think about it from that perspective as well. You may not just be buying a, a business model in itself. You may actually be buying it to own your marketplace. So we, we do our own little M&A strategy online. So just to kind of explain that a little bit, you might have your own business which is selling some kind of, I don't know, um, well, I'd say a lot of people are in coaching or personal, yeah, or a product or coaching and personal development. Say you, you're in some sort of industry and doing coaching, you could look for websites that have your target people or have authority in that industry already. So you can buy authority as well. So I and, see. So it's kind of like that's another, um, I guess, completely different website, but it's still under the same um I guess ownership of your own business. So it's kind of like you're buying competition, but you still own it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So that I can imagine lots of people's heads would be reeling somewhat <laughs> <laughs> uh, as to that kind of strategy. So let's say um, let's say I've got a product which is for the kitchen, right? So I yep. sell a product on Amazon. Um, what's if I was looking to do that strategy of, of, to buy a secondary website that's also maybe a blog, for example, that has traffic that I can eventually redirect, send some of that traffic to my e-commerce product that I sell. What steps would I take to look for such a website? Okay, so for that specific one, you'd be looking in, a, of course, in a specific niche around a specific topic. So. Our acquisition strategies, I guess that's what you're asking. What what are the acquisition strategies, like the buying strategies that we use? What, what's the find? process? Like what's the steps that you take when you're looking to kind of find a website in a vertical? Like let's say you know exactly what your niche is. Mm -hmm. What are the steps and the, what's the process that you go by to, to find such a site? So the best site, the best place to go to find websites to buy are the online marketplaces like flipper.com. Um, there's a lot of brokers that have come up in the last, in the recent last couple of sort of years, couple of years yeah. are real because this is becoming more and more popular, although still really relatively unknown um, that you can buy websites. Um, so there's brokers and flipper.com so, Flipper is probably the place that we recommend you go and if you want to go and check this out and you're a beginner, Flipper.com is a great place because they've got such a wide range of websites for sale. Now, we will also buy websites through, we will directly contact. So, you know, you might Google your kitchen product and see who your competitors are. Right. And, and you may even reach out to some of those and see if any of them are interested in selling their websites. And one of the, the little strategies we do there is we actually will contact the second tier or the third tier websites in those niches, not necessarily the leading sites because they're going to be expensive. But people that... Go to page two or three. Go to page two, three, sometimes up to page 10 because they're people that typically have a website that they've managed to build up traffic but they're not making money out of it. Mm. So that they will typically sell at a reasonable price to it. So that's a really valuable strategy for us. Um, that takes effort, but you can use a VA, a, I should say, a virtual assistant to help you, you know, target those kind of people. It's really easy. You just send them an email. Um, so this is what we do if we go into a niche that, as you said, Alana, a niche that we're already in and we know quite well and we want to add to it. The, the other thing that we do, though, is we, we're we very, very open and excited about buying websites in any niche. We don't care. It's just got to stack up and make money. It's just got to follow our due diligence process. Um, so that's so we a look lot for, easier. We look for, yeah, it's much easier to find websites for in terms of on marketplaces. When you go into a marketplace like flipper.com, go in with an open mind and say, okay, I'm just looking for the money-making system. I don't care what the topic is particularly. Mm. I'm just looking for the system that works. And I'm buying myself a system rather than a topic. So that's one of the mistakes that people often make is they go on. Uh, now, ob obviously, if you're wanting to buy for acquisition, you do need to go and look in a particular vertical. And on places like Flipper, you can narrow it down to particular topics. But if you're looking for creating another income stream or, or wanting to buy a, a complete online business that makes you money, then you be open to anything. You, you basically are searching on profits and traffic, not on topic. Okay. And if you go to a site like Flipper, is all 
that data so their profit numbers and their traffic numbers are they verified i mean you know something yeah, good, good really go, good question yeah <laughs> yeah so to a degree so so the two main things so we'll just take one step back just so everyone realizes that because you were asking us before what are the main like what's our process for buying a website there's two main things we live and breathe by which i'm sure all of you listening understand coming from a website background is profit and traffic so your question is excellent that's basically what our due diligence revolves around is looking at and verifying the profit and traffic that they're claiming and in this day and age, the good thing is, especially on a platform like Flipper or Empire Flippers are the same, they, they, to a degree, as much as they possibly can, verify the traffic and they actually now, on their listings, have a live feed into Google Analytics. Oh, wow. So, so yeah, and also into AdSense as well. It's a live feed. So, so they can't fake it. They can't fake it, too, but you still need to do your own due diligence. Yeah, it do, do. doesn't mean you just blindly believe the good word of the seller. You should never do that in any business sales situation, whether it's online or offline businesses. So, you know, there's, it's taken us, what, 20 years to, you know, we, we're experts in due diligence. We can't just teach it in five minutes. But the, the big starting point where you really do need to look at is verifying that profit and traffic. And the good news is it is verified generally with live Google Analytics data. Yeah, but as you'd know, Alana, too, obviously we need to deep dive into that analytics data and have a mm. look at, okay, so yes, it's getting 10,000 visits a month. We want to know time on page. We want to exactly. know traffic sources. We want to know yeah, how much direct, how much referral, how, how much, much social, social media. how much yeah. – because. Basically, the question, the big overarching question that we're going to ask about this website is, how likely is this website to keep making the money that it's showing right now and keep getting the traffic that it's get showing right now? And well, so the due diligence process is to find out the answer to that question. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, you say you, say you look at profit and traffic, but traffic is not all traffic's created equal, right? No, as, not at all. As you say, you know, you've got to look at the bounce rate and how many sessions. I mean, I think about it, you know, me being a traffic person, I can I can throw up a Google Display Network campaign and bid one cent and buy all this junk traffic. Yeah. If, you know, but if the, and to inflate the overall traffic numbers, but if that probably would have a bounce rate of 99% or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the, it, every, it leaves clues. So it's it's quite common sense actually, and and anyone who's been in this website world, um, especially anyone who's in like you, like paid traffic or SEO traffic, you'll know, you'll understand that um, how, what to look for, what's unusual, what what um, <laughs> I always quote that the '80s song, things that make you go hmm. Mm. That's a good one, and, yeah. Yeah, and and sometimes it's quite simple. Like we we were we often show an example of a website where this is a few years back, and it was one that was making money out of um, work at a home. work at home kind of offers, and it was called it was called Loot Swoop. And when we looked, and it had a big fall off the cliff in Google. Now sometimes that's actually an opportunity in disguise because we can recover those sometimes. So we always, even if they have had a fall off the cliff, had this a Google slap, we might look at them to see if we can recover them because we can buy them cheap and and get them, build them back up because we've seen it has been at this level of traffic. Yep. So it's obviously a good topic and a good niche and people like it, but Google didn't like it for what, whatever reason. <laughs> they, they were probably doing something naughty. And um, so this particular one, all I did, I could see that drop off. So what I did was I ran an analytics um, session for all the traffic pre the drop off to see, okay, what are the top keywords? Where's the traffic coming from? Let's have a look at all that. Then I ran the report for post traffic drop off, what's happening. And it turned out the top three keywords after the traffic drop off were get paid to read Loot Swoop. Um, and lootswoop.com, like the actual URL, and then there was a whole lot more direct traffic. <laughs> so you can see instantly go, okay, righto, somebody's trying to buy tra buy people views to dress this up to yes. look for sale. That's so, you know, it often it's very obvious, especially in the top keywords. Um, a great example is another site we were looking at, and it was actually for, it was a removals website, but one of the top keywords was color lilies 
and and broken it's wrist or sprained yeah. wrist or something. You're going, no, that's not right. Like, see how it's, often it's quite obvious that something's gone wrong with this website and, yeah, we need to investigate and find out. That's the next level is we find all these things and then we have to figure out, okay, is the owner purposely trying to pull wool over our eyes? Are they untrustworthy or are they just a bit uneducated? Like, do they not realise what they've done and they've messed it up um, by, and, you know, I've had just one recently I was doing due diligence on and um, the guy had completely rebuilt the website and totally lost. He didn't understand about URLs. And so all the ranked URLs, he changed the addresses off. Oh, my God. I was going, oh, dude. <laughs> rookie, rookie mistake. <laughs> but we could. I mean, it might, if it had only just happened, it might be recoverable. See how we can see an opportunity there possibly to put those pages back, create, re, have those URLs back. If they haven't been de-indexed yet, perhaps we've got the opportunity to quickly turn that back around. Yes. But we have to make that assessment. Okay, so going back to kind of the process, so you, you yep. go to Flipper, you have an open mind, you're open to all uh, niches or niches for American listeners and you find um, that, I guess, accurate profit and traffic number. Do you have some kind of, um, I guess, sweet spot of traffic and profit numbers that you think are a good kind of, I guess, I mean, do you go after really high high traffic websites or low traffic or like kind of what's what's that sweet spot that you look for? We're actually looking for it, it's actually about yeah. lifestyle. It's it's not about the so it's about the deal and we make sure the system works. So it actually yeah. doesn't matter what the profit and traffic is as such. Right. It's it does this system work and can we improve it? Can we add well, some value to it? But the lifestyle factor is okay. If that website requires two posts a day to maintain, no, I'm, no, I'm not interested because <laughs> I don't want to pay my team to have to do that and I don't want to have to organise, like get my website manager organising all that because it just costs too much. Okay. So depending on how much it made, I guess, but it's also a lot of hassle. And there is one other aspect to the due diligence that we should mention when we're looking at these websites so that might help answer that question as well. There's a third part on top of profit and traffic. We also look at the market. Mm. Can we reliably expect this thing to keep making us money for the next five years? Right. So because because as people would realise, I'm sure, online, there are plenty of markets where you can actually make a lot of money off websites that do reviews and stuff and you get paid affiliate commissions, but they're very transient. So, for instance, um, iPhone 10 websites, you can make a lot of money from Google AdSense on those sites because you can get a lot of traffic to them, So, particularly in the tech space, but things go out of, out of flavour. So we, don't, we tend to avoid those. And so what we're looking at is this combination, like Liz said, it's not about, there's no sweet spot for profit or traffic. It's more about lifestyle and the marketplace that it's in, that the website's in. Can we, do we think we can run this thing and make good money off it for the next five years? So here's a really good example of a niche that we've come extremely close to getting into. It's extremely lucrative, but we just haven't quite done it yet. And that's the gaming niche. Mm, wow. Because... Whilst we, we teach our students, look, you can, go into, does, you can go into niches that you know nothing about without a problem at all, and that's kind of our sweet spot. So we'll go into weird and wonderful niches. So we've got a pigeon website, racing. Pigeon racing. We know nothing about <laughs> pigeons and oh stuff, but it's, it's really easy to work because it's a process that we understand. It's just selling an e-book, dead easy. We've got, webs we've got um, Spanish sites. Yeah. So, so can't even selling, read them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As long as they're selling, yeah, ebooks or, or ads, yeah, can't even read. Oh, it's so hard doing a keyword research on some of our foreign sites. But the problem with a niche for us, like gaming, is probably one of those niches which is you kind of need to understand what those... what's trending at the moment. Yeah. What, what are all these young gamers? And actually, they're not young, by the way, anymore. No, no. Uh, we have done a lot of research in that niche because you can make a ton of money in there pretty easily. But you still got to know about the niche. So for us, that's so for some of the we're looking for the evergreens, health, yeah. wealth, and happiness. And like Liz said, that fits so that's easy. So it fits our lifestyle. So and it fits our business model of you know being able to run these things kind of semi passively mm -hmm. once we've done the reno on them. Okay. And um, is the idea is just to build 
continually build out portfolios and, and yeah. hold on to the assets or to, to flip them? Uh, no, we, oh. we've actually, we sold a few um, over the last oh, couple of years. Is, Just yeah. uh, we got good offers on them. If we get a good offer, um, we had one that was, um, it was a bit time sensitive. It had a date in the URL. So we thought, okay, yes, we'll, we'll move that on. Yeah. Um, so things like that. Okay. So say, let's go back to the process. We're going to flip We find something that's got good profit traffic and the market that's evergreen that, you yep. know, yep. Um, and then I know on flip they have their price that they list it for. Is that, I mean, are they pretty, I guess it depends on the seller, but, but is that price negotiable? Does that start a negotiation process or is it just a matter of just going, yeah, I'll give you that money. Yeah, good question. Um, so there's two types of listing on Flipper. So Flipper is the main platform where they have an auction process for a lot of the listings. Mm -hmm. So if it's an auction, it is like eBay. You you bid. Right. And so you need to do all your due diligence and you need to have spoken to the seller. You, you We always communicate with the seller. I want to know who I'm buying from. And, and that's the other element of due diligence, by the way, which is you need to, uh, we recommend you talk to the seller or at least message them because you're going to have to work with this person over the coming kind of month or two. To, and to, that's where you might negotiate with them. Yeah, as well. and you might negotiate with them. But so then you then you go into the bidding process. So you will, the whole point of due diligence is actually not yes or no. It's how much am I prepared to risk right. on this site? And so we always mm, set our, we so. always set our, because, we always set our, you know, max price. All right, this is what I'm prepared to risk on this deal, and that would be what we would bid up to. Um, otherwise, there are listings now on Flip. It's changed a little bit. There are now listings, like you said, where they're asking a price. But yes, that is the starting price. You don't just say, "Yep, I'll give you that." Always negotiate. Okay. And yeah. also, you can negotiate with um, terms. different terms. So you might yeah. say, "I'll give you half now," and. 2000 a month for the next six months as long as it meets these performance criteria. Yeah, right. So you can, it, it's very flexible. It's, it's like a, any business sales. Yeah. So we, we structured all sorts of deals. So you can way. protect yourself in that way. Mm. And I guess you would know all those different uh, permutations and variations of structure given your background. Yep. Yeah. 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 And it was nice surprise to see that it's very normal to do those sorts of buyouts and things or, you know, half, half now, half later on with online businesses as well works yeah. exactly the same and way. it's good for both parties in that way mm. so then if you know you do your due diligence and do you come up with a number in mind of how you valued it so say someone has their website listed and you know the auction is currently going for i don't know just throw a number out there like ten thousand dollars but ten thousand bucks yeah. yeah you look at the numbers and you say no like how do you value your because somebody can probably think their website's worth way more than it actually <laughs> yeah, is yeah, generally do. um yeah. so how do you value a website sort of in a very unemotional way mm. uh, that's easy <laughs> the starting okay. point well the is, starting point is it's easy. just like any bricks and mortar business it's a it just goes off on what's called a multiplier of the monthly profit okay. so if, so if it makes a thousand bucks a month then profit. in website world those websites are selling anywhere from 10 to 20 times the monthly profit well actually 30 times sometimes now. 30 times between we, 10 and 30 we just spoke generally. with one of the leading brokers this morning from empire flippers and he was saying they're selling a bunch of yeah, good sites are easily selling on a twenty to thirty times multiplier. So the market has grown it's since grown, we've yeah. we've started. We, you know, um, but that that so let's say let's say if you want to get out there and have a look at a few websites and you think, all right, let's have a look at them and a realistic price for a website for a good solid website that's making consistent income that has a decent history and that we believe is going to continue into the future. Um, these days, previously, would have, we would have said ten to twelve times. Now, I would probably say fifteen to twenty times. Mm. Is it is a um, a good sort of uh, not start well starting point? Like, and this is how we negotiate with people often. If they're valuing it, if it's making ten thousand a month and they're valuing it at a million dollars, we would probably be saying, okay, mm. well, normally the way what we would value a good website at would be say 20 times the monthly profit. So we would value that at $200,000. Mm. And that gives them a sense of, oh, okay, that's how this world works. Um, and they can decide if, they, if they're if they interested at that level, 
then yay. If they're not, then okay. Well, we'll come back later when you when you can't find a buyer at a million. <laughs> Um, what, what about so, um, how long they've been making that profit for? So say for the last three months, they've been making $1,000 a month. Does that mm. mean that then you can apply that multiple to the last only three months worth of? Yeah, good, good question. So really again, I'll come question, back to yeah. that idea of due diligence is about deciding how much risk you're prepared to take. So if you see that last three months, they're doing $1,000 a month for the last three months, and you believe in your due diligence, looking at the site and looking at everything else, that you think, yes, I reckon that's going to keep going, and I think I can maintain that or grow it, then yes, you might value it based on the on $1,000 a month. But if you can see a few little shaky things in there, if you're a bit concerned about maybe the time on page is a bit low or that there's a lot of direct traffic or something and they haven't explained that very well, you might think, well, yeah, I, I think it might keep going, but I've got some reservations about that. So I'm not prepared to risk $30,000. I'd actually, if I can get it for 10, then I'm happy to take that risk. I reckon I can, because again, it's about what, what our goal is when we buy a website, we want to try and pay that back to ourselves as quickly as possible. So if we buy it on a 10 times monthly, in 10 months time, or less hopefully if we've renovated it well, but in 10 months time, we've basically kind of paid that money back to ourselves. So our risk in the market is zero. Well, you know, it's it's not, we haven't got our $10,000 out there. We've paid it back to ourselves. From there on, it's just profit. Yes. And we own the website. So that's, that's our goal. And our, that's why we like this strategy so much because we can pay off these assets so quickly back to ourselves. Yeah. What about uh, site age? So how long you've had that person's had that domain? Does that factor in? I mean, back in my yeah, day. yeah, absolutely. Definitely, That's yeah. a huge one. It's just like it's exactly the same with bricks and mortar businesses. Long established businesses sell for more mm. because they've got that track history, and you can you can reasonably assume it'll continue on in the, in a similar manner. So obviously online you need to be a little bit careful because age sites online can come with can a bit of baggage. Have some, yeah, yeah but the good news is sometimes. That, no, but the good thing now is it's been a good few years have gone since all the since major Google's, big Google's yeah, have had those big updates. The big dramatic updates like um, Penguin and um, you know, all the major big updates that were was occurring over the last couple of years. So the good news now is Long established websites are very valuable. I, I definitely, you know, if I see a five year old website for sale, my, my ears will prick up for sure. Mm. Five where years? Think, I, I would know. have thought 10 to 15 would be considered old. You consider five years old? Yeah, five yeah. Five years old, yeah. Yeah, right. There um, you go. 10 to 15 years. Oh, that's really, yeah. If they're good Gosh. sites and they're established, they're, they're really. Because um, really 10 good. to 15 years means they have to have been rebuilt by, by now. Because yeah. they can't be an H. Like, they if won't it's, be if HTML. It's, if it's an old HTML site, we'd be rebuilding that. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to get to some of your renovation tips in a minute. Yeah. Um, okay. So then you start negotiation process, and then you go ahead and buy it. Do you use a service like escrow or something? We used to in the past use escrow a lot. Um, escrow is very expensive though uh, on small deals. On bigger deals, it's okay. Um, but these days, the good thing is with Flipper, they've got free escrow service. It's awesome. Works really well. We recommend all our clients use it. So even on little tiny $300 websites or $500 websites, which, by the way, is where we suggest beginners start out on, um, you can use escrow. So it's really good practice to get used to using escrow. It's totally free on Flipper now. Um, what about, I mean, obviously I've got, the uh, my ad hat on when I'm asking this question, but do people also include in the sale of their website ad mm. accounts like a pic, the Facebook Pixel, for example? Which you know, if your Facebook Pixel has been on your website for five years, it's obviously nicely seasoned and all that fun stuff. Do they sell that ad account with it? Um, we have bought a website and transferred mm. an ad account. We generally, we, we don't buy websites that have had paid traffic. Um, so well, we have just we bought can't, one recently. We just bought one recently. Um, it was very tricky to transfer. Really Google hard. was very finicky. Like it, it wasn't an easy process, no. I'll say. Um, but that might have just been that particular um, consultant, possibly it was. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
But yes, certainly. Now, you obviously don't. Yeah, the other option, really, we shouldn't have transferred the Google account. What we should have done is probably, oh, uh, no, that might have lost history. So yes, I, I'm, we're not the experts to we're talk about that. That'd be that, that'd be your your ballpark for but knowing I mean, will they be what willing the transfer to relinquish? would be. My question is, are these people willing to relinquish that as an asset? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's part of the business. If that's, how the, if that's how the website gets traffic, Absolutely. basically what you're buying is the entire system of how this website gets traffic and makes sales. So if it includes an ebook, you own, you buy the, you transfer the copyright of that ebook to you. But it also, if it's a website that relies on paid traffic, then what we're buying is that system. And if the if the owner won't help us get that system, then I'm not interested. Then I'm not interested. It's not worth anything. It's not worth anything. Yeah, okay. So mm. so it's a really good question, yeah. What about um, um, like, um, what do they call it? Top level domains like a .com. Do you buy only yeah. .coms or do you buy .nets, <laughs> No, we, we buy whatever makes money. <laughs> No, but we do prefer top level yeah, domains. Right. So dot coms, dot nets, dot orgs, they're always our preferred. Yep. Um, the dot bizzes and the dot infos. What's and the weird one? Dot pianos and the dot, dot yeah. whatever's not really interested in those. Well, but Unless, if it if it's a system that know. makes money and someone's built their system on a dot piano, money, that's fine. That's we'll okay, buy I'll but buy that. All things being equal, this <laughs> <laughs> dot coms rock. They're 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 gonna become even more valuable as time goes on too. Okay, so let's talk some tech tips. So you mentioned before that you look at the top keywords that people are using to get traffic to that website. I mean, I, I'm an extensive Google Analytics user and I know that their search console does not really provide no. much <laughs> in the way of uh, organic search keywords. Conference. Yes. Yeah. So how do you find those top keywords that are generating the organic traffic? A variety of ways. Uh, one is we ask the business owner, the website owner, if they're any good at what they do, most of them we find know roughly the main keywords that they're getting. Well, they know what keywords they're targeting. Yeah. So and they can give will... us lists of keywords that they are specifically targeting. Part of our due diligence is if the owner says, well, it's ranking for these keywords, then guess what my due diligence is? I will quietly sit there in my Jimmy Jams at night and do manual searches. I'll set my browser to whatever country it is they say the keywords are ranking in. Uh, I'll just use a VPN for that and then I'll um, just manually do Google searches and see where they come up. We also do use tools. Though. So Google Analytics does give you clues, even though you ignore the not provided bit. It's not great. It's 95%. It, at, at, least it, at least it gives you an order. No, but for an most, order. most of the bigger sites, it gives you the order of the keywords. Like it shows you, even though it shows you, you know, such small data, at least it gives you an order, like as in which ones are at the top. Right. Um, so that and gives us an indication. Sometimes on bigger sites, SEMrush will SEMrush will work well for us, but it's very variable. Um, so these are the parts of due diligence that are, um, as you know, a little bit like Matt says, rubbery. Rubbery. That you can't get dead accurate data around this. So where, your question though, where we mainly start is with the seller. But because the keyword info is so important for us, it's absolute gold if we, you know, if we can get that. But, but Liz, you mentioned that when you were doing due diligence on that one example with the, I forget, the, sorry, I forget the name, the Loom or something. Oh, it was, oh yeah, it was a um, removalist website. No, 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 the other one where they were trying to. Loot Yeah, that's. Oh, Loot yeah. Yeah, how did, how did you find that keyword that they were trying uh, to... That was an old example, sorry. That was back in the days when you did get all the time. Oh, right. Google okay. Analytics. Okay. Google yeah. Analytics still isn't too bad, though, with the... Um, it gives you After an you give the like, not provided, it gives you a rough, very rough approximation of the main keywords that it's that um, are showing up for it. What about a tool like Ahrefs or Moz? Do you find that those... Yep, give you we yeah, use yeah. all of those. We, yeah. use, we use... So we'll compare data with all of them. We compare across all of them. So we use Ahrefs. Um, Majestic SEO is a favourite of ours um, for the for the backlink data, but also um, Ahrefs. KW Finder's coming up as well. And KW Finder's great. It's a really good tool. Cool. Okay. Uh, and SEM Rush went up. SEM Rush is kind of the go-to, but it only works on bigger sites, which doesn't always help us. It, it's 
but it's a really, really good tool, SEMrush. Yeah, I'm a big lover of SEMrush. I actually find yeah. the data is just so skewed toward USA, like especially yeah. if you're trying to do something in, in Australia, it's like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, well, most of our sites are USA-based, so SEMrush works well for us. Yep. Um, but I agree, for sites here in Australia, SEMrush is not much use. We've got so many clients say, oh, I can't get any useful data out of this. And I go, well, what's the website you're looking at? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Some okay. tiny little thing. Yeah, it's a tiny little Aussie site. You've got no chance with SEMrush. It's only good on the big sites and, yeah. like you said, the US sites. Are there any other tech tools that you do use that you find really helpful? Google Analytics. Yeah. <laughs> Google Analytics, Google Analytics, Google Analytics. <laughs> Just yeah, because we need to see we yeah. we need to see how people interact, interact with the site with as well. So that tells me it tells me what pages are they visiting, yeah. where are they going, and how long rates. are they spending. It, it really tells us a lot. Um, there's another site. Um, this is a few years back as well, but it's just a really interesting. It's just a good example um, where when we looked at the analytics, we saw that so he had affiliate offers on this website, but half the traffic, literally 50% of the traffic was coming into these two pages that connected nowhere. Wow. And so awesome. as, as soon as we bought that site, we just put little <laughs> banners on that through to the money, Gosh, like pages, money. and it instantly went up. Like, And so it's things like that that you find, um, little opportunities where things aren't connecting or people aren't finding what they're looking for, and we can see, okay, yes, we can we can fix that. So it depends how advanced your listeners are as well, but at, because we love SEO, so we obviously also will throw a site over. Just increase traffic with but we'll have content. A, and... In terms of tools, we'll also use Screaming Frog. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, Fic- yeah. do an re- SEO audit. I don't recommend that for beginners, and it's not necessary for beginners, but we'll do that on bigger Oh, sites. just the simple SEO things, though, like um, page speed and, and yeah. yeah, you know, your, your standard SEO kind of fix-ups. Yep. will often help a site enormously. That's all we're using in due diligence, yeah. the standard SEO tools that any SEO would use, so GT Metrics or whatever, or just a Google Speed Insights will do the job. Mm. Sometimes even just speeding up a website will make a big difference Huge in performance. Difference these days. Yeah. yeah. So for anyone who knows a bit of SEO, there's a glaring opportunity there for yeah. you to apply those skills onto an asset of your own. Yeah. Very cool. So you mentioned, you know, when you acquire a website, then you go through the process of renovation. <laughs> what mm. are some of the things that you renovate to turn it around? Yeah. So we first, we've got three areas, conversions, profits, and traffic okay. that we look at. And so conversions, first of all, we'll go over the website and have a look at, okay, that's that, what I was just saying. Um, where are people going? Are they finding the offers? Are mm. the offers presented well? Um, can is there, be, is there is any there better offers we can put on there or better higher paying offers? Well, that's the profit. So conversions, oh, we're sorry, just making I'm sure making sure people are finding the offers and 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 being able to click and being able to um, access them. So, for instance, just placing the AdSense blocks in better positions. Yeah, testing some different positions or something like that. Easy stuff. Um, second is then the the um, profits. So, yeah, like Matt just said, is there some better offers that we could put on there? Is there a better monetization? So mm-hmm. we might have bought a website that's got AdSense on it and getting two cents a click or whatever, and then we think, okay, well, we can actually better monetize that with some Amazon product or some something else that, that will make more money out of, out of each individual sale. Um, if we buy information products, we'll often bundle products. So instead of a $27 sale, it becomes a $47 sale. Yep. Um, and then traffic is yeah, the SEO. So an SEO audit, making sure that the site's clean and tidy, um, Screaming Frog, are there links broken, are there... Um, on-page stuff. Is there, is yeah, tidy, nice on-page, on-page SEO, check all the titles, check all all that kind of basic stuff, and then adding, doing the keyword research to add more content and doing a content schedule out to grow the website through either extra content it might some of them that we buy already have a lot of social following as well so doing um adding social and some have um email lists as well yep and so improving the communication with email lists and driving people back to the website or over to social or from social to website so just just doing a general tidy up in a lot of the cases is actually enough to get that website really, really nicely growing and happening. Yeah. 
back before I started my agency, I don't know, seven odd years ago, I actually used to build content sites and put AdSense on them. It's kind of part of my journey. And um, I found like when you sort of touched on um, ad placement and moving your AdSense blocks into sort of different areas, I, I played around with that. And yeah, I went from, I think it was like a 1% click through rate of my ad to a 10% purely, yeah. purely by changing the placement so it was in yep. line with the the content i was i was astounded i mean it was yeah. amazing yeah. Perfect. and you think you multiply just say you've bought doing that on an existing website, website that's that making a thousand dollars a month or say or? that has fifty thousand uniques a month when you're talking big traffic bigger traffic sites that can have a dramatic impact just simple little tweaks on your adsense you start getting even an extra one or two percent click-through rates that can be a lot of money on your bottom line and then you multiply that by 30 when you come to sell it that's right that's you can get really big leverage and you don't need to you don't need any more traffic to do that you just, it's no. just all of your exist what you're currently getting just I guess getting the most out of what you're currently getting yeah it's, yeah. it's interesting as well I probably about a year ago I kind of went down this route to try and buy a website and um, there were I didn't end up going ahead, um, but just into sort of talking about this. But one of the things they were selling was their database. So I think it was like 10,000 people. And that was like a really meant to be a very attractive uh, component of this sale. And sort of I started my own very, very basic <laughs> due diligence process. And it turns out that they hadn't emailed their database in like over two years. Yeah. Oh, okay. You yes. know? And I thought, hang on a minute. Like, I'm going to yeah. start emailing these people. They're going to, who are you? You know? <laughs> So the value of this 10,000 people database in, you know, after a bit of, just a little bit of prodding with this uh, potential seller, I was like, this, there's not much value in this database. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And you see how a lot of due diligence is that common sense. Um, a lot of, we have a full due diligence checklist and we always run through it because sometimes you just forget to ask totally. a specific question. Like, especially, I know our students, they often come to us and they, yeah, they'll have missed something like that, that they've just forgotten to ask the seller, hey, when was the last time the email list was emailed <laughs> and what's the response rate there? Um, even things like, oh, did you, do you have to pay for the theme and where, where are all the images from? Yes. So just little, we're checking everything to make sure that we can keep running that website um, and grow it. Yep. Awesome. Okay, before we wrap up, um, are there any kind of common or classic mistakes that you see people make, like sort of newbie rookie mistakes? Yes. Yes. Um, the common sense one of marrying up profit and traffic. I, it's not a rookie mistake. It, well, some seller will claim their website's making a thousand dollars a month off you know 500 visitors a month or something like yeah. that and you go no don't I think don't so know about that not in that <laughs> not in that niche so it, it is a mistake that people make so one of the things we get our students to do is just one of the final checkpoints is it's the common sense checkpoints does, does the profit make sense in light of the traffic and sometimes the reverse is true just recently we've helped some students do due diligences on really good websites where the owners were getting a hundred thousand visitors a month and they're only making like I don't know, 10 grand, or was it a couple of thousand bucks a month? And I was saying, well, in my experience, they should be making heaps more money than that in that niche. Depending on the niche, of course. So um, that, that's one. I think probably, probably the, the common mistakes are getting overexcited and believing the good word of the seller. Yeah, that's so the always just taking a step back and thinking, okay, well, let's do the due diligence. Let's <laughs> ask all the questions. Let's make sure this is real before you go in and make offers and get all excited and... and, um, and Actually, you're right, Liz. That is the number one rookie Yes, mistake. and it is. It's really exciting. It's like, I don't know, if anyone, if any of you have bought a property before, you know the feeling of, you know, just before it's, it's awesome. going to happen. It's so exciting and you get drawn into the emotion of it all. Um, it is really important to do the due diligence and, and not get mm -hmm. too excited by the deal until you've made sure that it's all legit and it's that you can actually keep keep that website running um and the best thing i think the best advice we can give is start small this is the mm. best thing about this marketplace is that you can go on flipper and buy a website for under 500 dollars 
go through the process. It may not be perfect. It may not tick all the due diligence boxes or anything like that, but at least you can go through the process of buying a website and having a play with it, breaking some things possibly if you're just starting out um, and seeing how it all works. And then you can just add zeros. Yep. So that's the wonderful thing. You can scale up as you go. And we've got students who've bought website, the very first websites they've bought, they've kind of played a play with them, done a little bit of a reno and then forgotten about them for a year and then come back and gone, oh, this is making me $100 a month or $50 a month or whatever. And you go, yay. They, yeah. They've literally done nothing to it for a year and they could sell that. Um, we actually, a student of ours just recently he sold a website that was making, was it $200 a month? $200, $200 a, a month, month and he sold it for $22,000. Wow. That's so crazy. there's value in oh, this. And things. he just sold another one for? A 50 times multiple, I think it was. 50 it was times making 200 bucks. I guess it, it's so, crazy. yeah. I guess it's all about what's it value, what's it the value to somebody else, you know? So if, if yeah. it's the right match for somebody's business in yeah. the in the M and A strategy that we talked about in the beginning, then it's worth maybe worth a fifty multiple for that right yeah. person. Yeah. So that's the main main thing though is yeah, start small. Yeah. That's our main can. advice because it's the rookie mistake. People go in and go too big, too mm. too quick. Whereas in this marketplace, you don't have to spend half a million or a million dollars like you do in property or traditional bricks and mortar businesses. You can go in and buy a website for 500 bucks. Yeah, cool. That is so interesting and helpful and I'm sure our listeners have picked up lots of nuggets of gold that you've shared with us today. How can our listeners find out more information about what you guys do and possibly how you could help them? Um, well, if you can go to the website, ebusinessinstitute.com.au or follow us on Facebook because um, we do, um, we're doing videos constantly showing you websites that are available in the marketplace and some tips and tricks on, on how to buy and what to do. And so you'll get inspired and, um, and hopefully, and we've got, we actually do do some free training as well if you find that on the website. So if you want to learn more and actually dive in and buy your first website, then just do I'd, free I'd imagine training on, do on, the do the training first. Yeah, um, and that's on and, your website. Just, yeah. Yes, and and at least get a bit of an idea of what's going on before you go in there and buy. Have a look around on the eBusiness Institute website, or as Liz said, on our our Facebook page is not actually the eBusiness Institute. It's our personal oh, it's name. personal. It's so it's Matt and Liz Rad. Rad. So R double A D. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Matt and Liz Rad Facebook. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I know I've certainly learned a lot from talking to you both and um, I might have to revisit this strategy after our time. I think you <laughs> did, Shirolana. You You'll be good at this. <laughs> All righty. I'll let you both go. Thank you so much for your time and, uh, yeah, it's been great having you on. Fantastic. Oh, Thanks fantastic. so much for having us. Okay, bye. You have been listening to the Talking Web Marketing Podcast. For more information or resources on today's episode, head on over to talkingwebmarketing.com.